Hi there. My name is Kamala Prue. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm a marriage and family therapist and a board certified behavior analyst. And um, I've got a school counseling credential. Um, I've done extensive training in working with people who experience trauma. And I've done a lot of training uh, working with folks in the LGBTQ plus community. I also provide animal assisted therapy. Um, I'm really happy to be here today talking with all of you. And I'm going to focus my talk primarily on young people and their parents. Um, I've worked with young people and families for like over 30 years and across all different kinds of environments um, in the educational setting, in private practice, um, as a teacher, as a behavior analyst, and um, have experienced a lot of what they go through and also my own experiences as a young person when I was growing up. So a lot of the, the young people that we work with who identify as being part of the LGBTQ plus community or anyone who is feeling marginalized by the greater society, um, there's, there's things that you experience on a daily basis that makes being an adolescent or just being a person in the world more challenging. Um, a lot of microaggressions, those can happen continually. Um, and in addition to microaggressions, which are like jokes or, or slurs or um, just put down in, that aren't directed at a particular person necessarily, a lot of, a lot of people experience overt aggression or they're, um, they experience physical aggression. Unfortunately, a huge percentage of people who, especially those who identify as being trans, experience more aggression than others. Um, and it's just a horrible aspect of our society and something that really needs to be changed, obviously. Subtler things like a uh, lack of inclusion in coursework, like being assigned a list of things to read in an English class, and none of the authors are in the LGBTQ community, none of the authors are people of color, those kinds of things, that lack of inclusion, that lack of presence, knowing that you are there, you are part of what is being taught, what is being experienced. There's a lot of school-based lack of inclusion, such as um, something like, like prom. Um, a lot of times there's the prom king and the prom queen. And that is just that perpetuation of the binary that is so prevalent in our culture and excludes a huge portion of our population. There's, and everyone talks about restrooms and locker rooms, and that's a real thing. Um, if you are needing to use a restroom and nothing feels safe, that's a huge health issue. So our GSA club identified an area of most interest and concern for the students and and that was the lack of gender neutral restrooms on campus um, the club found that there are several single stall restrooms available but they're often locked and tend to be used just for teachers so the students went to the principal and shared their concerns and thankfully the principal asked if he could join one of our meetings and I was so incredibly proud of the kids. They uh, were perfectly articulate and shared with the principal their concerns and he listened and he vowed to the kids that he would make sure that when they're able to be back on campus that those restrooms would remain unlocked and they also discussed the need for safe places for students to change to when they needed to dress out for PE. So the locker room issue is also going to be discussed. And it was a beautiful moment of advocacy on the students' part and the willingness to listen and make actual positive change on the part of the admin. Other things that young people experience are fear of being outed. A lot of the kids that we work with at, at the high school and the wellness center are out more at school than they are at home. 
or perhaps they're out with just a certain select few of, te of their teachers or their friends. Um, and they're really worried that somebody can make a mistake and use their preferred name in a situation that isn't safe. There's a lot of research that shows people who are marginalized, people who are in the LGBTQ plus community experience higher rates of mental health challenges, such as anxiety and depression. Also rates of suicidality are much higher. For adolescents in general, suicide is the second leading cause of death. For people in the LGBTQ plus community, the rates are much higher, especially for those who identify as being trans. There's a frequency of self-harm, of um, dysmorphia, of not feeling comfortable in your skin, of not feeling seen, not feeling heard, um, and just an overall sense of isolation. And the pandemic, of course, has added to that. Some people have had a bit of relief because they haven't had to deal with things face to face, but others, school is like the safe place. It's where they can meet with their friends, where they have some support of adults in their lives, where they can be more their more authentic self. And they're stuck at home with family members who are not supportive, who might even be abusive. So many of the young people that we've worked with have had to leave their families for safety reasons and have ended up couch surfing or being homeless. And, and it's, it's tragic. So I've said a bunch of stuff that you already know. This is your life. You experience these things. You know what's going on out there. So what do you do about it? How do you get through this time period, this time period of incredible growth and change? So one of the things that comes across most often with the people that we work with is having some kind of a community. Find people who do support you, who do see you, who do celebrate you. Find those people, they're out there. It might be just one friend. There might be just one teacher. So I started off and it was like the first or first week perhaps of school and this awesome person comes in and said that they had an interest in psychology and would love to be my unofficial teacher's aide. They had some free periods and they would just love to be able to help out. And um, this incredible person identified as being non-binary and pansexual. Uh, they were out at school, but not at home. And uh, they helped me identify more of what would be beneficial to pe young people in the LGBTQ plus community on campus, as well as students in general. And this young person had a wide array of friends and when their friends were experiencing challenges they'd say hey why don't you go to the wellness center and check it out there might be somebody there who can talk with you and so through their influence more and more people started coming to the wellness center and they have gone on to They've graduated from high school a few years ago and have gone on to pursue a degree in psychology. Reach out, look for this feeling of belonging and, and support that is more prevalent these days, thankfully. If it, even if it's just via a virtual group, because there's so many online that are supportive. Um, know your rights. There are, in California, thankfully, we have a lot of different legal resources that other states don't have and you know find out about them there's some great resources online where you can search what are your rights if your school doesn't have a gsa consider starting one if it does have one check it out it might not be for you it might um that is a place where you could find some community celebrate yourself you know we're, we're all going through challenges and yours are uniquely yours um, but they can also 
be a source of strength. Your challenges, your ways of seeing the world, the things that you experience, that can be part of what makes you a stronger, more vibrant person. It's okay to, to struggle and to think about things and be confused. Celebrate all those things as aspects of your becoming. There's a ton of sites that offer coping skills that help you get through the day-to-day -day stuff. Um, you know, everybody talks about breathing and mindfulness, and even though those feel kind of trite, they really do work. Um, find the ones that work for you. Art, music, poetry, just yelling. Um, <laughs> all those different things can help you deal in the moment. A lot of people find it helpful to have a mantra, um, a saying that goes on in their mind when they experience those microaggressions, those day-to-day -day challenges, those insults. I could tell you some, but it's best if you come up with your own, something along the lines that, that lets you know that you're okay. It's their problem. It's not you. You're perfectly beautiful and fine, just as you are. If you have someone that you can talk with, someone you can trust, perhaps you can consult with them on creating a safety plan for those times when things get really hard. Uh, a safety plan is kind of like a list of things to do. Like if things are at this level, I do this. If things get a little worse, I do this. The safety plan can help you in those times of extreme stress where you're not able to think as clearly, um, where you're just in that fight, flight, or freeze mode. A safety plan can be a guideline to keep you safe because we want you on this planet. We want you safe and whole. Having an adult ally, an uh, adult that you can go to, can be incredibly powerful. Um, in a perfect world, maybe your parents. Sometimes that's the way it is and that's fabulous. Other times it can be an adult relative, an older sibling, um, a friend's parent, a teacher, a bus driver, a cafeteria person. Uh, sometimes it's a therapist. Uh, Find that ally and use them as a resource to help you through those times, to help you develop those skills. So for parents, uh, all the young people that we work with in the LGBTQ plus community and outside of that community, it, they bring up that they want their parents to connect with them. They want to have that parental connection. And what we hear most frequently is that I just want them to listen, to just listen to me and hopefully gain some understanding. One of the students shared with us that uh, they were really surprised that their parents had a hard time with their identity as being pansexual and non-binary because their parents are gay. And uh, they were like, well, I just thought they would get it. <laughs> and um, you know, Coming from a different generation, perhaps that wasn't something that they experienced as readily uh, when they were growing up or in their, their lives. So uh, thankfully, these parents did get the education that they needed and how to support their student. And um, it, it led to better communication between them and more understanding and growth. Parents, We've all been there, we've been teenagers, we've been through this. Um, most of us come from a place of caring and love, and we don't want our kids to suffer. But we often come to a conversation with our young people with an agenda, with something that we want to get across. So I'd recommend taking a moment, taking a few deep breaths, and just sitting back and letting your child talk with you and not trying to come up with a solution, not trying to say, oh yeah, well, when I was young, because that'll t turn everything off. Just sit there and listen. Make sure that you're hearing what they're saying. And then from there, perhaps you can work together to move forward in a more cohesive way. You know, so many kids that we've worked with have had challenges in their family systems and um, tragically have had parents who tried to send them to conversion therapy, uh, send them to relatives who live out of state. In 
almost all of those circumstances, this has led to self-harm, to suicidality, to um, hospitalizations. I'm thinking of one person in particular who had some of the most severe challenges of any of the kids that I worked with. But I'm so happy to say that they overcame those challenges, that it wasn't easy and it involved separating themselves from their family and living independently but finding others who did support them and ending up graduating early and going on to pursue college and thriving in that environment. Lots of people have shared how incredibly affirming it is to do something so simple as just using your young person's pronouns, using the correct pronouns and their preferred name. This year, some students shared with me that one of their teachers um, asked all of the students on their first days of school their the name that they prefer and their pronouns. So that shows a little bit of growth and development in our educational system. Um, that one thing helped those students feel so much more seen and accepted and included. It was awesome. Another thing you could do to make school a little bit more comfortable for you um, is to change your name in Aries. You can also change your gender. Uh, they have now have a non-binary option as well. Um, what is, this is really helpful, especially in distance learning, so you don't have to see your dead name come up every time that you're on um, a Google Meet or Zoom meeting. Um, also, the teachers would have your your name and gender on their attendance sheets. Uh, the only drawback is that sometimes people aren't out at school at home, and so their preferred name would show up on communications that go out to families, um, to your parents. So, but if this is okay with you, um, it's super easy to do. All you have to do is contact the, your school counselor, let them know of the changes that you'd like to make. It'll change your name in your email address, all those different um, things that Aries pushes out. Adults also should realize that young people you know, we're, it's, a, it's a dynamic time. It's a time of change. The young people in your life are figuring out who they are. They might be very consistently one way. They might be experimenting with different ex expressions of their gender, of their sexuality. And that's all part of the process. And it's perfectly normal. It's wonderful. It's how they figure out how they fit in the world. You know, it's, we all are on a spectrum as far as our sexuality and our gender. And for some people, it's more fixed than for others. And in adolescence is a time when it is even more fluid than at an adulthood or in early childhood. And as parents, we often have um, what I call the idealized child in our mind. We have this concept of who our child will be. Sometimes that I idealized child is kind of fixed um, and if our actual child falls out of that that idea that we have created um, parents struggle uh, there's a sense of loss there's a sense of grief in all my experience what I recommend is to as the best as you can embrace your actual child let go of that idealized child embrace and enjoy and celebrate the child you have you're doing so much to help them feel valued to help them feel strong to help them feel like they do belong and that does incredible things and opens up so much more for them it's also important for us to educate ourselves to go to those websites to check out the information that's available through like the Gala Pride and Diversity Center, through Gender Spectrum, through the Trevor Project, through PFLAG, GLSEN. There's so many, so many resources available where we can find out what our children are experiencing, what our young people deal with on a daily basis. So we can 
be more equipped to support them and advocate for them. We're all on a journey. We're all figuring out how we fit. We're all growing. We're all changing. I wholeheartedly believe that this is a beautiful thing, that it is where we develop our creativity, our spark. I am so honored to go on this journey with uh, uh, so many young people who inspire me on a daily basis, who blow me away with their wisdom, their courage, their ability to see the challenges out there and not let them stop them in their journey of becoming. Let's celebrate us all together, this beautiful soup of humanity, and work together to make this a more embracing, accepting, and loving place.